Hi, my name is Daryl Peterson, and I'm one of the technical sales managers here at MicroMeasurements. Today, I'd like to spend a few minutes discussing uh, shunt calibration and how it applies to strain gauge circuits. I want to talk a little bit about why we use it, talk a little bit about how it works, and also talk a little bit about how we apply it for use with strain gauge instrumentation. First off, why do we use it? Shunt calibration is used to scale the instrument for the correct engineering units. If you're using strain gauges, that might be microstrain. If you're using a torque transducer, that might be foot pounds or newton meters. Secondly, it corrects for errors in excitation and gain settings on your electronics. Shunt calibration is a way for you to simulate a very known specific amount of strain or response, and therefore calibration errors associated with excitation tolerances and gain tolerances will fall to the side. Third, shunt calibration can be used to compensate for lead wire resistance depending on how you use it within a Wheatstone bridge. And we'll get to that in just a minute. So when you look at shunt calibration, it's really a very simple circuit. All you're doing is taking one resistor and you're connecting it in parallel across another one. Once you connect this resistor in place, it, it creates a drop in the resistance, and that drop in resistance will be equivalent to the amount of resistance change you would get from strain gauge. For example, we use a 59,880 ohm resistor, and that's used with a 120 ohm circuit because when we connect it, it creates a 1,000 microstrain change, assuming a gauge factor of two. If you happen to be using a 350 ohm circuit, we, we'd suggest a 174,650 ohm resistor because that one would also produce a 1,000 microstrain change based on a gauge factor of two. Now with our own instrumentation, specifically our data acquisition, we like to shunt calibrate across what's known as the dummy resistor in the Wheatstone bridge. If you take a look at this sketch, you'll see that this resistor gets connected across the resistor that has to match the input resistance of your strain gauge. One of the advantages to shunt calibrating the dummy resistor is that you can use it to compensate for the lead wires that are connected to your strain gauge. In addition, when you shunt the dummy resistor, you're taking a precise resistor and connecting it across another precision resistor, and that simulates a very precise level of change. This location is also back at the instrument, so I would consider it a convenient point of calibration because you're back at the instrument rather than out at the strain gauge at the gauge socket. And then last, when you calibrate the dummy resistor, you're also simulating tension. And if you're primarily testing in tension, that's probably a good thing. Now, some of our instrumentation shunt calibrates across the internal half bridge. And you might ask yourself, well, why would you do that? Well, if you shunt the internal half bridge, what you're gonna find is that you can simulate tension or compression. In addition, you're gonna be using precise resistors. You're taking a precision resistor, connecting it in parallel across another precision resistor. So you can be very accurate in your simulation. The only disadvantage to shunt calibrating across the internal half bridge is that if you're gonna compensate for your lead wire resistance connected to the strain gauge, you have to do it mathematically. If you'd like to read more about shunt calibration, take a look at our technical notes that are available at www dot micro measurements dot com. Thank you.